about to get slapped <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Kenton and Habiba. This is Habiba here with... Kenton. <laughs> Kenton on Friday. I assume by the time you're watching this, this is on Friday, Friday the 13th. It is actually my birthday, my real birthday. You guys have sent us happy birthday messages. Thank you so much, Team Leo. What's up? Anyway, we are here with another Friday, Wisdom Friday conversation. I'm thinking of calling it that, Wisdom Friday conversation with Kenton and Habiba. So, we're gonna get started. You guys have sent us some questions. Some of them are from just different places and not even from the same video. So I just picked some interesting ones. So this first one, I'm gonna jump right into it, comes from Solomon Yisa. And Kenton doesn't know any of the questions, by the way. Oh, great. He says, I am Solomon from Nigeria. I am inspired by you, Habiba and Kenton. And this came from our last Q&A video. It goes on, so I'm just editing it here. Uh, my question is, how do you guys make up after an argument in your marriage? So I guess after all that, the question was, how do you guys make over or make up after an argument in your marriage? And I believe I reached out to say was the question, how do we make up after the argument or how do we basically handle an argument in our marriage is really the real question. Well, it's, it's different questions. Right. How you handle an argument and then how do you, how do you smooth over? Well, how do you make up after? Yeah, well, it's, well it's we can different. answer both. How do you make up after an argument in your marriage? Uh, uh, I take the um, coming to America approach. Uh, and Prince Akeem was uh, uh, his first potential wife, whatever you like. So whatever you want to make it smooth, that's what I do. Yeah, right. Is that how you handle the last argument? I, I have no idea. I can't remember. <laughs> I take the fifth. No, you can't take the fifth. I plead the fifth. That's my constitutional right. No, you can't plead the fifth. There's a young couple out there right now that may have had an argument okay. in their marriage. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. All okay. right. Look, look. See, you just, quali uh, you just qualified it. Young couple. Mm -hmm. The way young people fight and the way old people fight in a long term, you know, and established is different. Okay? So... So you just adjust to to your partner, you know. So when you many times when you fight, especially when you're you know you you're new in a marriage, you're newly, you know, like within the first seven years, many times those arguments tend to tend to be, you know, uh, you know communication issues. You, you misunderstand each other. Uh, sometimes you, you stop listening to each other. You know, so so I think the critical thing is is that how you make up also reflects how you resolve the issue. So it's going to vary. So um, it just depends upon how 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 intense the uh, the conflict is. It's really a lot of it is conflict so, management. So, so without giving them any much too much detail, I don't want to give any detail. Well, I know without giving them too much detail. How did you handle our last argument? It's different. I, every, every, everything's different. You know, inter, interpersonal conflicts are different, uh, you know, especially when you have a lot of water under the bridge. So when you're married a long time, you know, there's going to be triggers and stuff like that. Uh, you, you can get under each other's skin because you have a higher level of intimacy. So, you know, uh, things can be said that can be either misconstrued and stuff like that. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, uh, when you are in a, a mature relationship, you know, I mean, 20 plus years, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna have disagreements. Sometimes they, they can be petty, you know? So, uh, you know, I think the, the most important thing is just that, you know, uh, to just, uh, you know, listen to each other and not take it too seriously Unless it's a serious issue. See, that's what I'm saying. You know, right. What constitutes then a serious issue? Oh, cheating on each other. That's right. a serious issue. Right. Drug use. 
Right. Thievery. I mean, there's a lot lying. of lying. Lying. Well, uh, uh, well, you gotta qualify that. Some, if you're lying because you don't want to hurt the other person's feeling, some people fight over that. Like, if you, you come and say, "Hey, do I look fat in this?" You know, you have to then make an executive decision whether to tell the truth. That usually doesn't result in a major argument. It depends on the person. Some people are very sensitive about their weight, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. If you sit there and you say like, no honey, I think, you know, you look fine, and say the person looks ratchet, but you're not, you don't have courageous, you're not courageous enough to tell them, and then they go out wearing something they shouldn't be wearing, and then people are like, giving them a double look. All right. See, there's, there's, it's, it's, it's complicated. It's not like one. Well, the big picture, I would say truly, honestly for us, <laughs> without me joking around, <laughs> is that usually let's see which one of us has the worst temper yeah, I, <laughs> first you know, of all okay I'll so the point you. is the point, the point the is point usually is, the one who stops talking to the other person is usually kenton when he's mad he don't want to talk to me no okay because i don't i you know at, at, at this stage of, of of being you know 30 30 years you know into a relationship sometimes it's better not to say Right, thing. but on the other hand, I'm the type of person that doesn't stay mad too long, or it's very painful for me to stay mad. Or quiet. I gotta, or quiet. I gotta express myself, and I gotta let him know what it is that's upsetting me. So I, no matter what, feel like I'm the type of person that doesn't want to really, not to say that I don't want to avoid conflict. I feel like you have to deal with it. You can't really run from it. So if there's something bothering you, I feel like it needs to be addressed. Um, I mean, that's just me personally. Sometimes, though, it's important to cool off, to like back away, have some space. You know, if there's something bothering you, maybe to evaluate how should I best approach the situation? You know, how should I best approach him or, or her yeah, uh, sure. before I go full on attack? You know, and because sometimes you can say things that are hurtful that, you know, um, right, that you might regret later or you just said in the heat of the moment. And it, so, yeah, so it happens. So that's why, that's why, you know, you know, yeah, sometimes you want to provide some distance, you know, go chop wood. Um, yeah, go chop yeah. wood. Where we got wood out here? Oh, got to find some wood to chop. <laughs> some, some, you know. So, you know, cut down a tree, I don't know. Solomon Yisa, Y-I-S-A, -Y I hope we answer the question. And then in general, I say it's very important not to stay mad for too long. You know, it's, it's all, well, yeah. you know, and to have respect for each other. You know, a totally different subject, but I, I just made me think about, sometimes you're gonna have an argument based on a difference of an opinion. And you're two individuals, no matter how long you've been married, you're not going to agree on everything. I think it's always crucial that you recognize we can have a difference of an opinion or an approach to something, but that doesn't mean I respect you less. Yeah. Um, and men and women communicate differently. I mean, it's just a fact. I mean, just men... <clears throat> I mean, just... So, wait, be specific. How do men, would you say, give me an example well, how men... I mean, you know, we, we just tend to, you know, like being quiet, you know, you know, to just kind of, I mean, walk away and not engage. And sometimes that can be interpreted that we don't care, but we do care. It's just that we are trying not to escalate. So sometimes... You know, our perception is that, you know, we get quiet or we, you know, it looks like we're tuning, tuning out, but it's just more that, you know, we're just not um, trying to escalate things. And like you just said, or sometimes, and again, it's not, we try not to overgeneralize, but sometimes, right. you, you know, you want to talk it out. Mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe we don't want to talk it out at the moment. You know, we want to kind of like, you know, let's take a moment and think about it. And then so... So sometimes that creates that conflict where there just wants to be consistent engagement and then the other party's disengaging. Okay, so the next question, and I actually forgot to write who sent this one, but they asked, how do you deal with two kids in college? That was the question. How do you deal with 
two kids in college. Now, I wasn't sure whether they meant financially or emotionally. Yeah, it's you know. a very broad question. Right. I mean, so, you know, again, that's that's where there's, it's you know, again, that, you know, I don't believe in like one size fits all. I mean, I really, I think that's part of the thing is that everyone's looking at, you know, sometimes that's why sometimes the questions can be a little overly broad right. because everyone's situation it's, it's unique, yeah, you know, because so, that's why, you know, that's why when you see this, like, you do these 10 steps, you become a millionaire, yeah, you know, all those things, I think that there are general themes or mm -hmm. uh, general uh, principles that are true generally, but how you customize those principles to make them adaptable to your situation and to the opportunities that presents itself, that's, that's really where the, 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 oh, the skills in regards to finances and so forth, I mean, it's, a, it's challenging. Right. Um, you know, you have to, one, I think, so talking about just general principles without knowing specific, you know, situations, mm -hmm. one is that it's con it's constant engagement. So, so for example, like, you know, uh, especially in these times with the pandemic and remote, you know, you have a lot of things and, and then also in different countries or in different regions also how school works or university right. can also impact. So generally in the United States, you know, we have uh, different systems, meaning that, you know, you have private and public education systems. So you have private universities and then you have public. So out here in North Carolina, you know, for example, you have Duke University, that's a private university. Um, it's it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's a reputation as a, as a um, an Ivy League of the South, it says, is that high in quality? Right. Um, but then it's the but, Harvard of the South. Well, I, sort I, of, I, I but I don't know if it really the is the Harvard of well, the South. Well, but I mean, like, it's, it's, <laughs> but it's very well, I mean, it's very it's well. It's got a good reputation, good reputation, very good, good, good reputation. school, good, I mean, it's a solid school. And then you have a solid, uh, so fortunately, it's expensive. <laughs> well, yeah, it's very expensive, but they have good endowments and stuff, so, uh, um, but, and then you have uh, North Carolina has also very strong public institutions like UNC Chapel Hill. Right, um, and which NC was the State. first public yeah. university in the country. In the country, yeah. And it has a very good, extremely good um, reputation in research and public service and stuff like that and, um, and journalism and, and public health. So you have, so you have, so you have that. So. So and then you have and so in between then you have also s uh, smaller uh, private colleges as well as public s schools. So you have a strong system. So so the thing is is that that's also part of in your know, decision in, in in managing is what schools have um, the opportunities uh, you know for your children and how the costs. So that's the thing. Each. So basically you need to, you know, be able to call the cashier's office, the bursar's office. You need to understand the system. And I think that's one of the things that can be a challenge for families is that, especially if it's first generation, if your children are, are uh, first generation going to school, that can be also a challenge for, for uh, many families because if you don't know the, or understand the system, um, you can't be the best advocate for your uh, for your children mm -hmm. to fight through, especially with financial aid, because the, really the truth is matters that no one's going to look after them. Yeah, you say, oh, they got to look out for themselves, but really, it's kind of like the blind leading the blind. You can't, you can't just throw someone in the water and then just say, learn how to swim. Hey, that's not the best approach. Right. Sometimes it's out of necessity. Yeah, as you're saying, it's kind of unique for every person in terms of how we deal with kids in college. And our unique situation is, even though we have two kids in college, we actually have three people in school. Because obviously you have our two youngest kids and also Kenton's in law school. So that makes it a very unique situation. Um, so, but from an emotional point of view, I guess it's 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 interesting because it constantly keeps us learning it constantly keeps us on our toes but for me personally i have this sort of fear that there's going to come a time where you know our children will be done with college and boom they're out into the world and here we are no young kids anymore so um at least that's my point of view um 
you know, some parents are looking forward to their children just getting out there and being done. I am not particularly, that's just not something I'm looking forward to. I mean, it's interesting to look ahead, but I've enjoyed being a parent. I've enjoyed ha having my children. And uh, anyway, I went on a different tangent here. I just think it's a hard question to answer. Well, how do you? It's not hard. It's too broad. It's right. Kind of almost, how do you how do you manage it financially? How do you manage it uh, resource wise, like time wise? You know. Right. How right. does it how does it impact your? Well, your... financially, if you meant financially, well, we're managing. <laughs> it's not easy, but we're managing. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like you have to constantly, um, you know, work and and. Even if you plan ahead, things change, you know, like the pandemic, you didn't plan a pandemic. Right. So they're, you know, so going remote, you know, different costs. Now they're going back to school. Um, you know, again, that's why, it, you know, again, the key thing is to constantly always um, be engaged, always make sure you review, you know, loans and stuff. You know, our goal is to try to get through with the least amount of um, uh, debt for the kids. So when they come out, uh, they're not saddled with a huge amount of debt. Right. Uh, so, uh, the next question comes from uh, DJ DJ. Yeah, I think that's the name of the channel. It says, hi, beautiful couple. Oh, that was on our community page. I just posted that earlier today asking for questions. So, uh, this person says, hi, beautiful couple. Is Kenton full Vietnamese or is he mixed? He looks like my dear Lebanese labor. <laughs> neighbor, neighbor, you look like her Lebanese neighbor. Are you mixed or are you full Vietnamese? I tell you what, you know, the thing is I look like everyone's neighbor and, and friend. I get that all the time. I look like uh, someone's Filipino buddy. I look right. like you could someone, be Filipino. someone's, uh, you know, um, mixed Latino um, cousin. Mm. I get that. Uh, I, one thing I definitely don't get is um, Nigerian. <laughs> no. I just don't pass. Of course not. I try. I don't even know if you even pass or get that you're white. Nobody ever, no, that, except people of color may say, well not people of color, like some black people obviously can see you're not black. Yeah. But I don't know that anyone has ever mistaken you for white Well, either. Well, no, I'm not like Irish, you know, right. you know or like straight from, um, Great Britain or something like that, or Denmark or Norway. No, no, I mean, there, there's a little bit of something. Right. I mean, you know, even, um, yeah, even some of my classmates at school, yeah, they, you know, they, they see the uh, Asian in me. So, no, I'm, you know, I, you know, because, again, people like to see that. So, yeah, I have, um, you know, I, well, my mother's Vietnamese and my father, uh, you know, uh, hailed from the Midwest, actually, Nebraska, but his family went all the way back to actually England. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean like old school England, you know, where you, know, you had family members that had names like Ebenezer and you know, <laughs> stuff like that. I mean my Bible names. Yeah, Bible names, yeah. Old time yeah, old names. Time. I mean my father. Gertrude I mean, my father. And Mildred. <laughs> yeah, my father's exactly. No, my father's name was Orville. Mm -hmm. I mean that's you know, that's kinda of old so lucky I wasn't junior. Mm -hmm. So but my name Kenton is actually uh, his middle name. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, so um, so yeah, so it, yeah, I, I look like that, but that's funny to mention that, yeah, so um, <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, what is it like being married to a black woman? Oh, that's a whole show. <laughs> that's a whole show. But what is it like? Well, yeah, what is it like being married to a black woman? Well, where do I start? Uh, to a black Do you Leo? like my headscarf, by the way? Of course. And my earrings, you see how they're matching? Yes, absolutely. So there you go. <laughs> that's that's it right there in a nutshell. <laughs> no, that is not. That's just Habiba. <laughs> no. Well, so, yeah, again, you don't want to overgeneralize, but I mean, right. you know, but being, again, I think uh, being married to a, a queen, being married to a black woman is being married to a queen. That's, I, I think, how, how oh. I would say it succinctly. No, I mean, honest. I mean, that's how I see it, you know. I mean, but any, being married to any woman is being married to a queen. I think with, with uh, you know, with a black woman, there's, uh, you know, in my humble opinion, there's a level of uh, elegance and, you know, and, and strength and, and there's pride and uh, that's what comes to my mind first. And there's a, you know, um, 
um, you know, a, a tradition of, uh, of, uh, of, of strength and, and, and nobility. And I think that, I think women in general have that. I mean, just to have the ability to create life is such a blessing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in one way. It's to like, play devil's advocate, mm -hmm. what do you, how do you think life would be different if your wife were not black? Okay, let's say specifically if she was a white American. I have no idea. I mean, that's like, I mean, if, if, if I've been privileged your ears to be burning you? No. <laughs> you know, scratching again, your ears? Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, you can imagine. I mean, you know, it's more like, uh, you know, what it's like to uh, be married to a docile woman that, you know, that, that, that cooks and fetches your slippers and stuff. Let me think about what, that. What are you talking what are you about? about that? What are you talking about, a docile woman? woman. Shh, shh. Oh, 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 you're about to get slapped right now. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Well, there you go. So uh, now you know. See, it's, it's you know, uh, you don't, <laughs> I don't hear that. <laughs> See, I wouldn't hear that. <laughs> so those are some of the subtle differences. Yeah. This is totally different. This is from uh, a person by the name, I'll spell it, Y-V-L-A-N-I. And she just seemed really upset after our last uh, Impossible Burger review. I guess I'll shorten it. The whole point is she felt like we were making fun of a vegan lifestyle. You know how we did the little burger review? And I was kind of laughing at your response, right? But let me read some of her statements. I think it's a she, I'm not for sure, but I'm saying she, I assume it's a she. Uh, she says, uh, being vegan is a lifestyle change for your health, for animals, for the environment. It is a choice. One does not have to opt for processed vegan foods. Uh, I'm skipping here. This is not how everything, wow. she, it was a long thing she wrote. Health is not a laughable matter. All right, let me stop. I wish I, you I, well, I, and I hope you let me, let me your stop. approach to veganism right, with let, a little let, bit more all, respect. All right, let me stop here. Okay, right. Look, for all for all the vegans out there and stuff, of course, there's respect. You gotta remember also, veganism isn't new. I right. Mean, it, it, you know, so let, me, let me tell you something. In India, in in, in Vietnam, mm -hmm. under Buddhism, you know, you know, in Asia, we practice uh, veganism mm -hmm. and all the different forms. Because remember, in, in, in as offshoot of Buddhism, as well as in India and, and Hinduism stuff, you know. So it's not like it's not like this purview of, of this special sect of people because of marketing and stuff. This stuff goes back thousands of years. Right. Well, other this cultures, person sounds like they were you know, maybe a little older and have been you know, doing this but, for years too. Well, good for them. But this, right. is, but this is the point. It's just that... When, I don't understand what, what, why it's a laughing matter well, to try vegan foods. It's a laughing matter when the food doesn't taste like what you expect it to taste. But, right. You know, especially, especially as someone that I grew up I, I went to Buddhist temple and stuff when I was young, and I've had, you know, uh, vegan, you know, diets and, and so forth. And again, you know, and even Vietnamese diet is actually very um, plant based. Very, yeah, plant based. Yeah, we, we don't, a lot of we vegetables. Don't, yeah, a lot of vegetables. You don't really eat, you know, meat is, is, is not like here in America where it's a center dish, it's, it's more as, as part of a whole. And many other cultures as well. So it's, mm -hmm. and so, and it's not, it's not processed. Like right. as it is here, so 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 the thing is that you know I, I'm sorry if you felt that way, but you know what, you gotta take life a little bit lighter. It's right. a li life is too short to sit there and take everything so seriously. Second thing is that if you're always self righteous about stuff, you're right. always just gonna live offended. And so then, right. what good is that? If 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 yeah, vegan is a lifestyle, and then I I respect that. Exactly, that's, that's I lifestyle. respect it too. That's you know just like I, I respect people that they, they don't eat meat. Good for them, I, but. But then I don't hold it over them and say, well, I'm a carnivore, you know, that's, that, that's a sign of manhood. I mean, it's like, I think what it is, then everyone tries to create these little partitions and so forth. Right. The, and, the, and the video was that if you tasted what I tasted, <laughs> you would have made that face too, because that did not right. taste right. 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 The so. whole point was, you know, a lot of our videos or for a lot of people, videos on YouTube are partly for entertainment. I want you to learn something, but it's also partly for entertainment. However, when, when I tried that or we tried that Impossible Burger, 
it literally was our first time and yes when I approached it my thing was I totally respect vegetarians I totally respect eating a healthy diet but I absolutely do not approve of a vegetarian diet that's so processed to the point where it is no longer healthy because the point was to show that just because something is vegetarian doesn't necessarily make it healthy yeah, and have, it was very specific it wasn't make, about yeah, you make a distinct, all you make vegetarians a or something. all yeah. vegans yeah and see and again that that's more reflective of the individual you gotta right. start saying that Being why overly sensitive why are you so sensitive because you're so judgy and, because you, you, you're looking at other people and again this is where you're leaping on these other, other things to it you know uh, try to have more know, respect more respect says, but, see, but the uh, thing is it's like look you know I'm try sorry, to have an but, open mind and not mock those who are endorsing veganism nobody was mocking vegans nobody I was definitely not mocking vegans I was maybe mocking the impossible burger and I know that that's not how most vegans you, live. You know how much that you know how much <laughs> sodium is in the impossible burger. Right, it was like 17% no, or more even than, more. It, it's up to 30% in wow. some of the versions. Right. So, come on, let's get, let's get real. Sometimes what it is is that it's just marketing. Just it's just like the same thing where it, it's it's like you know they just create something so that way people sell and buy and they try to make it unique. Like I said, you want to really practice true veganism, then, you know, there's, again, thousand-year-old cultures like in India and stuff that they've been practicing it in a way that the food tastes like the food it's supposed to be. Right. Food, food, real food doesn't need to have labels. Yeah, exactly. Real food, if you see an apple, you know what an apple is. You see a banana or a carrot, spinach, you know what it is. When a food is marketed and packaged and it has 10 five, 10, 20 different ingredients. That's overly processed and clearly not really healthy for you. That's my point. I was not making fun of vegans. I was not making fun but, of the lifestyle. I was not know, making let me fun. Tell, let me tell, tell, no, I'm gonna stop you right there. You know what? We don't need to defend anything. Right. And, and so if you like it, you don't like it, switch to another channel. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, because I'm, I'm not here to sit there and coach you. If you're so sensitive that you gotta sit there and feel offended because of that, I'm telling you, you're gonna walk around with thin skin, life's gonna just, that's not how the world works. Right. You, you know, and that's the thing, and I think that's part of the issue, is that you're sitting there going like, everyone has to be this way. It's just like with faith and religion and stuff like that. Are you doing it because you want to make a world better for other people and improve their lives, or is it because it makes you feel better because you want to feel that you're better than somebody else? Right. So think about that. So that's right. Are you doing veganism because you really care or is it because it really makes you feel superior to other people? Mm -hmm. And so that's why you love to tell everyone, I'm a vegan. Mm -hmm. You know, just like you have snowflakes running around saying, I'm, I'm anti-racist. Really? Really? Are you? Because then when push comes to shove, you find out, no, that they're more than quick and happy to sit there and make sure that someone doesn't move into their neighborhood, you know, because they just don't want the appearance right. of being racist. But deep down, are they really? No. It's more about trying, again, that superiority issue. I don't need that. So, hey, it's on you. And another thing, too, here's another <laughs> lesson. Uh, you got me going now. Here's another lesson. I am not responsible for how you feel. You right. are responsible to how you feel. Right. And that's, and that's a p empowerment for everyone that's listening. Sometimes what happens is that other people want to mm -hmm. manipulate how you feel so they're gonna make you feel guilty because oh you make me feel bad I didn't make you feel bad you That's chose to feel bad you chose exactly to feel offended I didn't make you feel offended you chose to it because that's the thing like you said you know we give if you accept someone making you feel bad you're giving them free rent okay right. so that's up to you I'm not responsible for how you feel okay I'm only responsible for how I deliver, and if I purposefully, with intent, mm -hmm. seek to do something to to uh, uh, injure right. someone else, <laughs> but hey, you're responsible with how you choose to uh, uh, hold on to that. So that's your responsibility, not mine. All right, y'all. So I hope you enjoyed this conversation with us. It got a little riled up. 
but hey, that's life, right? It doesn't take that's much life. for a while either. <laughs> it's just silliness. You know, now. right. We can't all be so damn sensitive all the time. You know, people can't talk anymore. People can't just be themselves anymore. Anyway, we hope you were uh, at least entertained or at least learned something new. And we hope to see you again next Friday. Don't forget to thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you're seeing our videos. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't so far. So on that note, we will see you on Sunday. Yes, I promise we'll have a vlog on Sunday. And uh, let us know what do you want us to talk about next Friday. <laughs> yeah. Should we come back next Friday and antagonize somebody else? <laughs> That's not our intent. Yeah, our yeah. intent is to, I guess, entertain and educate. I hope we are doing that, right, And, and conversate. I mean, right. the thing is, it's like, again, it's all learning, you know. Right. Uh, knowledge is, is perpetual. That's the thing. It's not this black and white binary, mm -hmm. you know, wrong or right. Right. You know, there's so much gray. Right, you know, right. If you really think about things, and it's just about coming together to a common understanding without judgment, meeting people where they are. Right, right. So. <laughs> Man, you can start me litigating stuff. Get me going. On that note, thank you guys for watching, and we will see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye.